Hello everyone, my name is Todd. I'm going to be your logic tutor. Today we're going to practice uh, applying the rules of proper inference, or better yet, recognizing uh, when they've been used. In our example here, we have a proof that we're supposed to be doing. One, two, and three are premises, as indicated by these P's over here. And we are supposed to prove that J or K has been done. Uh, or follows from the premises, and the proof has been done. We got to J or K, uh, and they said they used lines 1, 2, and 3, but they forgot to write down the rule of inference that gets us there. So we just have to identify the rule of inference. And in this case, the rule of inference that gets us there is um, complex dilemma or constructive dilemma, CD, okay? Uh, as you remember, the argument form goes something like this, box or circle, box, then triangle, circle, then diamond, let's say, and then we get either a triangle or a diamond. So, uh, You'll notice that line two is the disjunction, is a substitution instance of the disjunction, and line one is uh, an instance of our second line, and then line three is this one right here. And so we get triangle or diamond, which in this case happens to be J or K. And this is by complex dilemma. Let's try another. Okay, this proof, one through five are premises. We're supposed to get to R. This proof takes three steps and they've solved it, solved it for us. They got to R, but they forgot to write down the rules of inference that were used and we need to identify them. So line six came from lines three and four. So let's take a look at three and four and figure out what rule of inference we've used to get to three and four, uh, to get to six from three and four. Uh, as you can see, six is just the conjunction of three and four. So the rule that was used was conjunction. Let's move to line seven. They used one and six to get seven. So they used this six and they used one. Okay, now look at one. If you notice the main logical operator on one is a conditional. And this blob here on six is the same as the antecedent on line one. And what they concluded on seven was the consequent. Okay, and that's just a case of modus ponens. So modus ponens was the rule of inference they used. Uh, so line 8, we got R, and they used 2, 5, and 7. Uh, so they used three lines. That's a clue. There's only two uh, rules that uh, involve three lines, and that's a simple dilemma or constructive dilemma. And simple dilemma gives us... a just one statement constant and constructive dilemma gets us one or the other so it's going to be simple dilemma let's look two five and seven seven says l or k two says if l we're going to get an r five says but if k then we're going to get an r so either way we're getting an r and so that was a simple dilemma Okay, let's take a look at another one. Okay, uh, one through four are premises. We have to prove Q if and only if A. Uh, they took three steps to get to Q if and only if A. Forgot to write down the rules that they used, so let's figure it out. Line five came from two and three, two and three. Let's look at it. Now notice that three is the opposite of the consequent on line two, and five is the opposite of the antecedent on two. 
that's a modus tollens. Okay, let's try to figure out line six. We have not L, it came from line one and five. So let's look at one and five. Uh, one says, if L then not M. Five says, not not M. So this is the opposite of the consequent. And L, which we concluded is the opposite of the antecedent of the L. And so again, that's modus tollens. So we just need to figure out the final line. They use lines four and six. Four is a disjunction. It says L or Q if and only if A. Six has not L. It has the negation of the first disjunct and it concludes a second disjunct. That's the case of disjunctive syllogism or that's a case of. Take a look at another um, four premises, four steps to get to the conclusion. And the conclusion we're after is this D or not F and Z then not B. Okay. Um, so line five is this first one that they deduced from one and two. Uh, let's look at one and two, C or D, not C. So this is the opposite of the first uh, disjunct, and we conclude the second disjunct. That's a case of disjunctive syllogism. Line six, then, came from four and five. Four says, if you have a D, then you get Z, then B. Five is, we have a D, so we're going to get the Z, then B. And that's a case of modus ponens. Okay, you can think of it as box or box then circle, box therefore uh, circle. All right, line five came from, or line seven came from line five. Uh, we have D on line five and seven is D or F. And we know that we can add anything we want with an or by disjunct, um, addition addition. Um, eight came from six and seven. And if you notice that six is uh, the second conjunct and seven is the first conjunct and they're joined by an and. So all we did was form a conjunction out of stuff we already had. So conjunction is the, the rule of inference that was used. Uh, another one, this time uh, one through four are premises and it took five steps to get to the conclusion down here on nine. Um, step five, S came from one. How did it come from one? Well, one is S and U and if it's an and, uh, we know that we can separate the first conjunct uh, by simplification is how we got to the S. Now, uh, the U on 6 came from 2 and 5. Let's look at those. 2 says not U, then not S. 5 has the opposite of the consequent. And 6 is claiming the opposite of the antecedent. That's a case of modus tollens. Okay. Uh, 7. We have G from three and six. Here's three and here's six. Three says, if you, then G, and six says you. Well, of course, then G. Um, that's modus ponens. Uh, eight, let's look at eight. How did we get to eight? From five and seven, they say. Uh, five is S and seven is G. They just put them together uh, that's a case of a conjunction. When you join two things together with an and, that's a conjunction. And line 9 came from 8. Uh, and the only difference between 8 and 9 is the or f part. And so we know that that was just added by addition. Okay. I think that's all of... Uh,